From what we heard in Isalt, demons are attacking villages, and more people are growing upset with the Abbey. So I hadn't expected things in Haria Village to be so laid back. They might be on their best behavior because you're accompanied by an exorcist. Huh. I didn't know you could see the world in more than just black and white. The Abbey wouldn't entrust my responsibilities to someone who couldn't see beyond the surface. I have seen many things in my work. I've beheld both the light and the darkness in the world of men. Hmm. Despite that... No, because of that, I won't turn away from the wrongs that I encounter. Moreover, I have faith. I believe there is good in all our souls. The darkness, huh? Yes, like you. You're awfully direct. I can't deal with this anymore! What's the matter? Everyone's sick of all these fruit-flavored gels, right? Um... So, I made gels using the giant cacao beans only found here on this island. It gave them a nice bitter chocolate taste. 
But people complained that they weren't avant-garde enough. Ugh, chocolate-flavored gels, how prosaic, bah! This got me fuming! So I caught some Maiden Bonita fish you find around here, ground them up, and made some gels with them. You put fish into chocolate gels? Well, people do braise meat with chocolate. Chocolate and fish may go surprisingly well together. Exactly! It was the discovery of a century! The Bonito Flakes crunchiness and the gel's gumminess made for an exquisitely bad combo, which made it interesting. So if you made an innovative new type of gel, why are you so angry? That's exactly my problem! I outdid myself! Now I need to make my gel's world debut as amazing as they are! So I thought up the ultimate plan. And that is? I'll put my Chocanito gels in toilets all over the world. I'll call it the Great Chocanito Toilet Gambit. No one will go to the bathroom without finding my gels. I think everyone will have a lot of fun. So, genius, right? <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but I think it's funny too. Right? Uh, I knew that kids would get it. Who's a kid? But all the adults in my village called it silly and lowbrow. They forbade me from selling my Chocolito gels at all. Isn't that just horrible? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Aw, oh, man. Things used to be so much better. Mom would make me dinner, and all I had to do was goo 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 ga, and everyone would smile and praise me. I don't want to become the kind of grown-up who can't find any fun in looking for gels in toilets. We could use a place to stay. Any rooms open? Yep. Just finished cleaning, in fact. You can help yourself to that room there. All right, time to start deciphering this scroll. Let's wait somewhere outside so Grimm can concentrate. Um, do you think maybe I could stay and watch? I really do want to study the ancient tongue. I promise I'll be quiet and not get in your way, teacher. What did you just say, child? Uh... That I'd be quiet, and... No, what did you call me? Teacher? You said you didn't want to be called ma'am, so I thought maybe that'd work. Yes, satisfactory. All right, I'll teach you how to read Ancient Averost. Thank you so much, teacher! We'll leave you two alone then. Let us know if anything comes up.
Listen, I don't know what they told you in Isolt, but our village has its own traditions. This village is under the divine protection of the Empyrean Amenoch. For unbroken centuries, a line of his priestesses have guided us. They are tasked with performing the sacred rites of worship. And sometimes, they even deliver us his words and will. And there's still a priestess today? Of course! And her daughter is training to become our next priestess. Although, I sometimes feel they push themselves too hard. Both mother and daughter are giving their all for Haria. But the Abbey doesn't care about any of that. And they stole our temple from us. By force? An exorcist named Teresa came and heard us out. But from the very beginning, she always intended on taking our temple. Her words may have been kind, but that doesn't change the fact that she demanded that we worship her god, Enomenat. In all the years we've worshipped Amenoch, not once did we ever try to force others to adopt our beliefs. Why haven't I seen this priest as she's talking about? plan on just giving up? Polymedes is Amenoch's temple. The priestess isn't the only one whose job it is to protect that temple. It's the duty of everyone born in this village. Why did the Abbey need Amenoch's temple badly enough to risk causing this much unrest? But how will we protect our village from the demons if the Abbey abandons us? Besides, we won't be able to do business with the people of his salt anymore. Our faith in Amenoch has nothing to do with the demons. When the priestess gets back, I'm going with her to protest. The demon blight changed everything. Will we never be able to return to the way things were? The way things were. So she digs being called teacher. Well played, Laffy said. She wasn't so fond of ma'am, so I guess he figured he needed an alternative. You can tell how badly he wanted to help her with the language work. I think our Malak boy's finally finding himself. So it would seem. What connection do you think there is between the violent demon Teresa mentioned and this village? Couldn't tell you. Could there have been a demon blight breakout here? This village doesn't look like it's been attacked, but... Whatever it is. If it keeps the Abbey's eyes off us for once, that's good enough for me. You really will use anything and everything towards your own aims, won't you? Yep, and that includes you. As I'm sure you've noticed. It sounds like deciphering the text might take some time. We should be prepared to wait it out here a while. Hopefully it'll all be worth it in the end. I hope so too, but ancient Avarost is complex. It's not just a matter of knowing the grammar and vocabulary. Oh? Then how exactly do you read it? I'm not sure about the specifics myself, but from what I understand, you kind of have to intuit a lot of it. A language based on guesswork? Thanks, old dead people. You're officially the worst. Banning local religions. The Abbey sure knows how to oppress the populace. I'd imagine that comes part and parcel with spreading the good word. Other gods would only get in the way. From what we overheard, it sounds like they've taken over Amenoch's temple, Polymedes, to use as their base of operations. Sealing it off would be provocative enough, but straight up taking it over? Not a lot of so-called reason to that. Unless... Do you think they need it for some other purpose? Shrug. Ancient Avarost, you have the obstinacy of a spurned lover who refuses to move on. Even for you, teacher? It's this one crucial line. I can't wrap my head around it. Er, uh, well, from what you've taught me so far, 
It looks like it says Sa Popo Mucho Sanchon. Correct, but if you merely translate it word for word, it ends up saying the parent hates tomatoes, the child eggplants. I doubt those have much to do with the nominat. <laughs> yeah. Their grammar is nothing like ours. Sometimes you have to reorder the words, and even then the meaning can require leaps of logic and flashes of intuition. Reordering? So like, san san, pocho pocho, pocho musan, pocho musan. Can you read it that way? Pocho musan. Now where did you get that from? These words are lined up, like they repeat. And when I read this part that same way, it just felt right. Pocho Muson. Hmm, if that's repeated here, then the passage turns into... The Nameless Empyrean. Empyrean! Ho oh, ho, oh, that has to refer to Innominat. I think we're on to something. All right, so if we apply this rule here, then... Hmm, hmm. It would seem to be a book of children's counting songs. It's not about Innominat? What matters is what the song says, child. And I think you will be very interested in the words. I wonder if they've made any progress yet. Shall we go check on them? Scout ship setting sail. Well, any results? Yes. Well, thanks to the boy here. As it turns out, he has quite the knack for languages. <laughs> Only because I've got the best teacher. Careful, honey tongue. You'll give this old girl ideas. Huh? Now, child, I'm sure they're curious about the song we unearthed. Why don't you read it aloud? Yes, teacher. Song? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Through pulses of earth doth base nature's flow, as he awaits the time of awakening. Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. The Nameless Empyrean hath one heart. The Nameless Empyrean hath one body. Therians? Essentially, this ancient text you found is an annotated volume of drawings and songs pertaining to Enominot. Annotated? Then hurry up and just tell us what it means. I'm sorry. So far, we've only figured out how to read the song lyrics. All right. I take it we're still in for a good long wait before it's thoroughly decrypted. Likely so. But if we want to find out what the Abbey is up to, we need to know what's in this book, no matter how long it takes. Hmm. What the Abbey's up to, is it? I think we can learn much, even from the lyrics alone. The drawings depict him with eight heads. One of them belongs to his main body, but the other seven are his mouths. Those mouths consume malevolence, 
sending it along Earth pulses back to that main body so he can awaken. The seven monsters fitting that description are called... Therians. Right. Now as for this malevolence, I have no idea what that means. Hmm... What about the second part? I haven't studied much ancient history, but it said this world was created by four Empyreans. Earth, water, wind, and fire. But they also call Enominot an Empyrean. Perhaps a war broke out between Enominot and the other Empyreans that resulted in him being sealed away. But if there is someone to connect with this divine power, the Therians will keep spawning. And just like that, Enominot will be revived. If we assume that Shepard Artorius fits that bill, and that he's trying to reawaken Enominot, everything lines up. Which means our job is to find these Therians and cut off Enominot's heads, so to speak. But where do we even start looking for them? Remember, the song states that the Therians in Enominot's body are connected through Earth pulses. If their job is to feed Enominot, the most effective place to position them would be at the Earth Pulse points. Points? The places where the power of Earth Pulses is concentrated. Places with that sigil. Hey, remember the barrier that was keeping this bug in the forest? Wait, are you trying to say that thing's Aetherian? And yet... It would explain why the Abbey was keeping it locked up. And there was that same barrier at the villa, too. That's right. Do you suppose that was also a Therian? Does that mean the Therians all come in different forms? Should we go to Logres and check? We've just started deciphering the book. I'd hate to lose time on some fool's errand. I'd rather know at least a little more about what's in it before we make a move. Hmm. Something bothering you, Grim? This line. The one about Therians being forever reborn. Uh, I just felt the same thing as I did in Warg Forest. The needle's pointing in the direction of Amenoch's temple, Palamedes. Do I recall hearing that the Abbey took that over? Temples and ritual sites are often built on places thought to be rich in spiritual energy. Could the temple possibly be an Earth Pulse Point? There's lots of Earth Pulse Points scattered all over the world. If there's only seven Therians, most of them will be empty. It's not like we have any better leads. If there's even a chance, shouldn't we go check it out? Better than sitting around waiting on the book. If nothing else, we'll find out what Laffy said is sensing. Hmm, just a theory, but if you were to kill a Therian... What? Hmm, I guess there's only one way to find out. Never mind. Good luck out there.